Hello there. A week ago, without internet, I was in the process of making the Scratch course. And I was at Kmart and I saw one of these. And I got inspired to create a video motion game where we use a lit up object like a toy lightsaber to slay enemies, which in this case are sharks and protect the little cute fish. And I don't know, I don't think there's that much of a need of introduction. So check it out, and below is the link to the course that it's a part of. Through. Score three, let the fish through. Oh my god, the sharks are so fast! Oh. This guy's tough! Hello and welcome to the saber slicing tutorial. And this tutorial is all about video motion control. So consider it optional because I imagine not everyone is going to have a working webcam. But in order to run this, you're going to need to take this blue uh, turn video unblock from Sensing, click on it, and if you see yourself, you're all good. Now this video can be done with just your hands because all that's being measured is the change in color of pixels on the screen over a certain location where the sprite is. But you could look really badass if you have. That's it. You know, a lightsaber or a uh, torch or a mobile phone. So, without further ado, let's come up with a game concept. And I was thinking something along the lines of objects flying in, like good guys and bad guys, flying in from the left towards the right. This being a goal line, and we can have um, a point scored for every goodie that reaches the end, and a point lost for every baddie that reaches the end. And in between is you and your mobile phone or your ninja moves trying to take out one type of sprite and not the other. So let's have a look at what we can do here. I don't know, butterflies, I mean, we did a lot of stuff with balls. Ah, uh, uh, fish. Are there like any evil fish? Like that one, wait, yeah, we could have, we could have fish and sharks. We can get rid of him and go back, go into underwater. All right. I mean, they should be easily recognizable, so I ought to color this fish. But um, other than that, I reckon we're pretty good. We can color him red. Okay. On the outside, he's entirely black. The sharks, how can we make him more visible? Hmm, maybe we can, like, add some lime green into his eyes. Kind of make him a more evil shark. I think we're going to use a black background, so I'm actually going to make his edges like that. Great. Now, another thing that, I, as I just said um, a second ago, is that we're going to change the background to something black. If the shark's that big, the fish should be a little bit smaller. Uh, one more. All right, that's that. That's fish. That's shark. The fish should be allowed to pass. The, the shark should not. The stage would look a little bit better if it were black. And look how easy that is. Boom. Right, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so how should they move? Well, let's 
try a basic version first. Let's have a move in straight lines and let's have them clone each other. So let's start with the shark. Uh, I think the idea is when we click the green flag, we're going to make 20 clones. Every two seconds, we're going to make a clone. And every clone is going to uh, point in a random direction. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to go to a random spot in here. So what does that mean? That means go to X, Y. Now, Y could be anywhere from here to here. So every time he starts off as a clone, he will show up somewhere out there. So we're going to pick a random from minus 170 to 170. Great. So when I click on the green flag, we should see every two seconds a random shark appear. Great! They're filling in pretty nicely. Okay. So now, each of these guys should point sort of that way. So, to the right is 90. So we're gonna go 45 minus 90 and 45 plus 90, which is 45 to 135. And so once they face a random direction, they just do what we've done so many times. Forever. Move 10 steps. And if on edge, bounce. All right. So this would mean that every two seconds a shock is launched. And let's see how that works. All right, great. They're sort of invading the screen at the moment. We could have a finish line though. And we can just go into the backdrop, maybe try a brand new color that's not used. Pink, full. Come on, scripts, that's cool. I don't know if I'll have to turn the camera off to get the right kind of purple. Um, I think I might for one second, but nonetheless. So we can do pretty much exactly the same code onto the fish. So just throw it all onto the fish. We don't want them launching at the very same time. So we can like just put a little bit of a delay at the start so the fish and the sharks don't go at the same time so check this out like sharks are gonna start going and then fish then shark then fish yep that's awesome that's what we want now we want um, to have a condition inside here and to do that I think I'll need to turn off the camera It'll only be for a few seconds. Turn video off. Come on. So we're going to have an if touching that color, um, you're going to have a score increase or a score decrease. So make a variable score and Inside the fish, we're going to go if touching color that one, we can have score go up by one. And put that in there. We can drag it onto the shark, and the shark is going to be. 
minus 1. Okay, so now when we launch this, the score is going to go plus minus plus minus. Yeah. So the hover is around zero, goes positive, negative, positive, negative. And chaos is ensuing. There'll be 40 sharks and fishes out there. And as you can see, we're going to have a good time with our lightsaber. Um, at the moment, I think they're going a bit too fast. But we're going to try to deal with it as well as we can and see what happens. Um, next up, we're going to have to figure out how to use video motion to stop, um, say, a shark. So we know, we already know that if he's touching the color, the score is going to decrease. So we can just duplicate that and see what we've got for video motion. Aha. Uh -huh. So video motion on this sprite. I guess we're going to have to go. I don't know what is a lot. I really don't. I'm just going to go with 25. I mean, I'm guessing 100 is a lot. So video motion, then we can delete the clone. And... Okay, so let's turn on the video and see if we can get, you know, erase, first of all, not move and see if the shark gets to the end. Now, can we, yep, yeah, we're waving and the shark can disappear great all right that is pretty awesome i'm i think uh, you know with a lightsaber it's going to be way better so i'm going to duplicate that put that inside the fish and i think we have ourselves a game i'm going to try playing it with my trusted lightsaber and I suppose the perfect score in this game, and we're going to make sure that it starts at zero, but the perfect score in this game would be 40. I believe it will be nearly impossible, but, you know, we'll see how far we can get. All right. Oh, no, I got to the fish. The score isn't going up. I'm playing the game badly, but the score is not going up, and I think I know why. That color right there, that color is no longer this color. So I guess we're going to have to make a brand new sprite that we draw. Which is no big deal. We'll just do what we did last time and we'll say touching sprite three, I guess. Sprite one now. Okay, that's the costume. So we're gonna move sprite one. Scripts, so we're gonna move sprite one to the edge. And everywhere where it says touching color increases the score, we're going to change to touching. Sprite one. Okay. First bug eliminated. Game on. Let the fish through. No! Get the shark. Get the sharks! 
And the fish through. Get the shark. Fish through. Yes. Okay, this is a bit of a cheat. So I'm going to slay the fish. Did it work? Oh, score eight. Awesome. There it is. Eight looked a bit like zero. Please be quiet. Right here. So, there it was. 15 minutes, and I think this game is already playable. It's already fun. But since I had such a good time, I'm going to make another bonus video adding extra visual effects, adding sound effects, and maybe even throwing in some music. So make sure to tune in for that one. And as for suggestions, well, I actually suggest that before seeing the next video, you go ahead and you put your own music, sound effects, and Perhaps one thing that could make a drastically cool difference is if the shark and the fish had health. In other words, if you had to strike them more than one time in order for them to disappear. That would make things quite interesting. Rightio, so much for this time. Have fun with it. Hello and welcome. This is going to be a, a bonus tutorial for the saber slicing game. Now, in this tutorial, I will do my utmost best to upgrade the saber slicing game to something that is ultimately playable, enjoyable, and something that I would want to invite my friends over and play. So, I don't think that anything that I'm about to do is going to be too advanced for any of you guys to do. But as far as this tutorial goes, just try to take it one concept at a time and try to implement as much as you can. The game that we've already built is an awesome, fun to play game, but I believe that it could be even better. And right here, I will show you some. I'd say sensible ideas and what we can do to make this game something special. All right. So first of all, let's have a look at what's going on when we play it. There's sharks and there's fish. They hit the end and sharks subtract points, fish add points. And ideally, you try to get rid of the sharks. Now, perhaps the first and the obvious thing to do would be to add some sound effects and visual effects. So what happens when we swat the fish and the sharks and what happens when they reach the target. Let's first look at what happens when they reach the target. Um, we're inside a shark now and when he's touching Sprite 1, which is this pink block here, we lose some score. But if we went into sounds and chose a sound, we might get an effect, maybe. Bubbles, not really. Door creak. Fairy dust. Snap. I like it. Shark biting. Perfect. Chomp. So now we go back into sounds and we play the chomp when the shark hits the wall. Perfect. Now we gotta come up with something nice and positive for the fishy. Um, sounds. Library. Cheer. Okay, it's a bit too much. Cool. I like that one actually. I like that one. Boink. So we're going to play boink when we are touching the sprite. 
Let's have a look. I like it. I like it. Okay, and then there's the business of these two guys hanging out. So these are the two originals while their clones are running about. And I don't think they do anything. They just get cloned. So watch this. The game is going to be there without them. Alright, so we clearly got to hide them. Which shouldn't be too hard. If we go into looks, we can hide there and show when we start. That ought to do it. So we can hide when that starts and show when the clones start. Loving it. All right. Now, a swatting sound. Let's see, let's see. Um, and we can make the same for both. Sounds, library, effects. Not really. Pop. I like. I'm. It's nice and simple, actually. I like pop. Give me pop. Scripts. And we will play the pop when we pop the. Oh, there's two pops. Pops like default. All right. So we're gonna play the pop when we pop either the fish or the shark. But we can do something more. We could like make them spin out and change colors, like, like you know, as if you hit them with a baseball bat. And I don't think that that's difficult to create. Like, if we have a short repeat, and like, we have them spin, and change color and size, change color effects, and change size. If we throw that in, I don't know if we'll have to reset the size or not, but we'll find out. That looks good. I like it. You kind of. Awesome. I like it. I like it. So I'm going to duplicate this little bit and I'm going to put it into the sharks as well. Mm -mm. I need my lightsaber. I have it, but we'll use it later when we test the, the final one. Okay, so what if, what if we made the game, I mean the game should be harder as it progresses. And we could either make, well in fact we, we can do both. We can make more sharks come in as the game goes on. And we could make the sharks faster as the game goes on. All right, let's let's have a look at that. Um, okay, we're inside the sharks, so we have. 10 sharks come in every two seconds and we can just duplicate that and have 15 more sharks and they can come in every second while in the fish well we can have we can send in a few less fish just five more so 15 sharks and five more fish so towards the end there's like a lot more sharks than fish and the sharks are coming more often and now for the speed well, if you have the score right there, and I'm thinking, if the sharks move 10 steps, 
Now, if you're losing, if you're having a bad start, if the Sharks were to move like 10 plus the score, and the score was say minus 5, they'd move only 5 steps, they would slow down. But if the score was like 10, they would move 20 steps. So they would keep getting faster as you're winning. This could be a challenge. If if this is the effect is too fast, of course we can slow it down a bit. But let's try that. So we're just gonna go move ten plus score. Or maybe should we do five steps plus score? Yeah, we'll initially make the shark slow. And then when you start winning, they'll speed up. And they'll get really tough. Okay. So I think the game is pretty well playable. I'm gonna try play without the saber. There is one more thing that I would love to try to add at the end. And maybe uh, have like a special kind of shark that has life, that is harder to kill. So if we were to duplicate this dude, um, we could make a variable King Shark Life. And we could send set King Shark Life to 10. And we could really we could move the King Shark really slowly. Maybe set his life to 20. We can move him slowly and he could come in at the end. So we could, he could like wait 30 seconds. And then we could have three King Sharks. And we could have each of them come in like three seconds apart. And the King Shark could look like that. And he could be like full on lime green, get a bucket. All right. Um, now, King Shark Clive the 20. Duplicate? No, 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 no. Change. So when we swat him, we, we reduce his life by one. This won't be perfect because there will be like three different King Sharks. Oh no. No, 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 no. I don't know how, how this is going to work because there's going to be three clones. But if we send them each like eight seconds apart, then we're going to have no problems. And we can change King Shark by minus one when we swat him. And all of this is going to happen only if the King Shark's life is less than one. King Shark life is less than one, he's gonna get popped. Come on, get get out. Sweet. Honestly, I don't know if this is going to work for the King Sharks, but we're going to test out a whole lot of things, and I think we have a game that could well be playable. Now, where is my trusted lightsaber? All right, I'll get the chair out of the way. And version two, let's maximize the screen. This is going to be a lot more fun. Here we go. Let the fish through. Score three. Let the fish through. Oh my 
god, the sharks are so fast! Oh. This guy's tough! Yes! Score 16! Personal best! Oh no! Lost three points there. Nearly got him. Alright, that was a lot of fun. I hope you create something like this at home and I hope you go through the trouble of either using your phone, which could be pretty shiny in these situations, or better yet, a lightsaber. I'm going to leave it here. I had a lot of fun and as soon as I stop, I'm going to play some more.